Tak kerja tu macam apa? Tak kerja tu macam apa? Cui, wah hak. Ah, burung tu mana? Tu mana ni sini? Wah berulu, berulu. Ikan ber, kau macam ah, atam dah tak. Mang dah tu baru harga. Harum senil jari ni. Harum kecuali. It was about going to a destination that I I knew nothing about. Looking for a remedy, another cure. There's this undying passion I have for pursuing the unknown, not only in life but especially in the mountains. China, the sleeping dragon, is beginning to stir, flexing its might along global economies. But for skiers and snowboarders, it opens a frontier tracing back to their roots. Where the Altai Mountains plunge into China, they are isolated in the Xinjiang Autonomous Region. Here, the regional government invited four Western athletes to contemplate the development of this untapped destination. China wasn't on my to-do list as far as a skiing destination. I've traveled most of the Western world for skiing in North America and Europe and the opportunity to come to China arose and I, I jumped at it. It was incredibly unique, it was different, and I wanted to see what it was all about. And especially to come this far northwest of China, obviously up against the border of Kazakhstan, Mongolia and Russia, it's, it's pretty far out there. And snowboarding's pretty much been my life. Since I was seven years old, just snowboarding every winter. And you know, snowboarding's a unique sport that you can go to these incredible locations to ride your snowboard. So that's just something that I, I like to pursue and you know, hopefully inspire others to do the same because there's a huge world with a lot of mountains in it, you know? Skiing A is so much fun. Like even a bad day of skiing, like those bumper stickers, a bad day of fishing is better than any day at work. That's kind of how I feel about skiing. I'm very grateful that I got to come experience this and it's, it's, it's a dream come true and it's a dream I never even knew I had. I've been pursuing big mountain snowboarding for the past uh, five years. My passion is to climb and ascend big mountains and then snowboard down them. So I've been lucky enough to uh, make a living doing that and pursuing that passion. The only way you're going to find out what's out there is if you go and climb the mountain and do it yourself. I got the call up. It was early in the new year and the opportunity to come to China and I, I jumped at it. I was like, yes, let's do it. They'd only just opened up the area. So to come here and to be sort of one of the first to really stay in this village, it's both a very humbling experience, but it's also very exciting to be able to go touring and really explore the region and explore what this area has to offer. We were just blown away immediately by the scope of this mountain range. The Altes are humongous. Some, some of the most beautiful, largest mountains I've been lucky enough to see. I think it's really cool that we came here and the four of us made our own decisions. There's no one guiding us. There's no one saying, this is what I've been checking out for the last month. And th that's kind of refreshing to like make your own decisions and be in charge of yourself. It's exciting doing this all for the first time and dealing with the language barrier and going to such a far-flung place to go ski. But part of the fun is just working with what you got and you know trying to find the enjoyment out of what you can. Like the first day we went up and we had a pretty gnarly run. And then the second day we just hopped over the ridge and it was amazing. It was uh, super soft snow and like little pillows down into the gut. I mean, that was like an ideal ski run anywhere. To find that 
after just kind of going for it out here. It was like really, really special. Coming into the Himo village was certainly an overwhelming and a very humbling experience. Now we're down here with these old school sleighs and horses, and we're gonna go meet the local ski maker. I think he shapes and makes his own skis. And so we're about to have this very authentic Northern China experience. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, this is like, I, I don't even know. I, I can't relate it to anything. Everything's pretty dramatic, you know? The horses are like extra thick and furry, and the, out in the river is beautiful, and the mountains are like, I don't know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely tripping out. We were dragged, you know, on these sleds by the horses to the old man's house that makes the traditional skis. That was incredible. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful to go through the forest and the woods and, and feel like you were stepping back into time and really stepping into their way of life, which is just beautiful. Telluride, Colorado is pretty small. There's like 2,000, maybe 3,000 people there. You meet the old guys who skied certain things for the first time, or maybe you know, you're lucky enough to go out and they're showing you where to go and then it was funny to come here and kind of see that over the span of like maybe you know however many thousands of years that they've been making these skis and meeting the ski shaper who's in his 80s and it was funny you know he's putting his hands on our hands and we're shaping the skis it's hard to kind of grasp that concept that these people have been skiing for so long but as someone who I'm a geek about skis. I'm a geek about the culture. I want to go in the backcountry. I want to ski the biggest thing. And these people kind of invented it. Despite the whole language barrier, it was cool to see all that come together. And then we're able to like, right next to them, like riding my own snowboard and they're on their skis. That was a really profound moment for me, I guess kind of an honor to be here and meet meet that and be around these people that ski on those wooden skis still today. I almost feel like a sense of duty to like carry that on, to share that with other people and I hope other people come just so they can experience that love of the sport also. How do I look? <laughs> this is my uh, first time this year skiing. To wear this, this clothing and ski on these skis, it, it's I feel very humbled and Looking forward to going back in time and, and reliving what, what the uh, um, Chinese people used to ski on. My strategy? I have zero strategy. <laughs> <laughs> pretty amazing you can actually kind of like kind of rip them a little I mean you know I was wildly out of control the whole time but like there's something to be said about out of control fun oh yeah absolutely yeah just makes me appreciate the locals even more yeah how in control they seem I feel like they ski better than I anticipated they like grip better than I anticipated like for being like kind of old school technology, they're pretty amazing feet. It's kind of beyond my wildest dreams. It's something I would have never imagined experiencing. These guys have it kind of dialed in. If you're gonna go hunting, this might be the ski to take with you. Yeah, you know, it makes sense. They've been doing this for a thousand years. It works pretty good. Yeah. Nobody's gonna get cold in one of these either, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, no. 
with skiing considered old-fashioned and little to no access to the backcountry, the Chinese youth have turned to snowboarding in the man-made parks and jumps outside of Beijing. As the Western athletes continue to explore Altai's skiing and snowboarding potential, they welcome two Chinese snowboarders from Beijing, who will discover for the first time what's been hiding in the remote mountains. Yeah, 新疆的这个分学。哦，对，就是，反正我们以前也从来没有来过这个新疆啊，都知道这个阿拉泰，然后也大概知道，就是说这可能是其实是世界上滑雪这个起源的地方，就是最早我们都好几千年了。We had a traditional meal in a family's home where they prepared horse inside beef intestine. And then these large chunks of beef meat and horse meat were presented to us and the host came and cut off bits of meat and gave every single person a piece of meat and it just felt like we were really being accepted into their culture and into their traditions. I mean, I'm more happy to sit at this table and eat this, this incredible <laughs> meal, you know? Like, I'm just as happy to do that as I am to go make turns. We ate, and we ate it with our hands, which was really fun and totally different than what I'm used to, and I like that a lot. The sense of being pushed outside of your comfort zone has been incredibly refreshing. Just interesting um, experiences. Those are the ones that I cherish. Those are the ones that I always remember. I learnt a, a skill set which was skiing in Australia and now I'm in China and I get to experience an incredible culture and for me that's what skiing has brought me in, into my life and to be able to travel the world and just to see some remarkable places. It's uh, yeah, very humbling to experience the northwest province of China is, is truly incredible. Snowboarding just snowboarding? No, I don't think so. Snowboarding is not just snowboarding. You know, snowboarding was snowboarding when I was a young kid in school. Then growing up, it becomes something totally different where you find that it takes you to all these places. It gets you out in the mountains in the winter. And you can get way out, whether it be back in Washington or Colorado or across the ocean in Xinjiang, China. <laughs> When it gets to that level, it's certainly not just snowboarding. It's, it's something a lot bigger. We're here to check it out and to see what the potential is here, because there is, from what I gather, a, a lot of plans to expand this area in terms of um, heli skiing operations and cat skiing operations and really open up this market to the winter tourism. Once we started to actually get up into the mountains, and snowboard, we realized we were gonna have to do a little more work to find some good snow. We start out in the mornings, everybody will tend to hop on snowmobiles and uh, we'll head up to a zone that maybe we scouted the day before. Ski just to the skis left of that big pine tree. You can come between these two little birch tree clumps. Yeah, exactly. There's enough snow left on that? Definitely. And the big thing on this trip so far has been finding uh, the right aspects as far as snow goes, which we learned on the first day. That was pretty south facing, so it was pretty well cooked and firm. And so we then, you know, we turned to the different aspects, anything north or northwest, northeast facing. So it was really nice to wake up this morning and find the snow is falling. There's so much potential here, and I'm excited that we're branching out and uh, trying a new aspect, and we'll see how it goes. Then we isolate this. Being here in the Altai region of China, um, there's no previous forecasting or avalanche center, forecasting center. So we're definitely, I think, maybe the first people to dig an avalanche pit on these aspects. That has actually been the craziest aspect for me because at home we have an avalanche center that we check every day and here we just rocked up. If something goes right now to me, it's going to be slough and it's going to be on the top. But I think I really do feel pretty good about this. Cool. Nice work, team. Good job, everybody. Yeah.
mountain ranges in the world, all over the world, is one of my favorite things to do. I feel like we really pursued the unknown here. This is one of the most remote places I've ever been as far as accessibility. Coming out here and diving into this very rich ancient culture has been just a dream come true, really. Good horseback riding. Horseback riding. Yeah. Oh, Chinese. Yeah. 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 就是落地基本上就是摔嘛，但是我我可以做这些动作，大概就是这样。嗯，主要还是滑的少这个地方。我也刚开始来的时候滑不稳，今天啊，对，那个后来的时候适应了，嗯，这个还可以，因为第一次都是我们都是第一次，你是第一次滑吗？分雪？呃，是是，也是第一次滑这个野雪，所以不还还不错。后来的时候那滑的挺好的。嗯 ，doing these Abbey tests in this area for the first time and you know, showing them the first split boards they've ever seen. That's, uh, that's something I've never been able to do, is show somebody their first split board. I think it's cool in a way that uh, it shows the world's kind of growing and people are getting out and seeing things that they wouldn't normally see, whether it be people coming to your town or uh, you're going to somebody else's. For example, I can jump up and jump up and jump up. He can jump up and jump up. 哎，这么漂亮，然后他往奢华速度来，我直接就滑了，这样的。<笑>对，我先给他打样，你知道吗？对对对。嗯，一直想在这儿搭一野雪跳台，今天也实现了。<笑><音乐><音乐><音乐>啊，一会儿我们有两个计划啊，两个两个方案。第一个就是我们直接从上面冲下来，然后啪做一个这个漂亮的动作啊，比如说后空翻或者是什么Master刷板之类的。然后还有一个就是方案，就是如果如果直接
I don't know what everyone else is doing on Tuesday, but that's what we're doing in China. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know till you try, and I think that's kind of the mantra maybe this place should have. We need to try, at least, and see what we can make out of it.这个地方比我想象中确实还要好然后我们还没有去那个康纳斯呢就离那个康纳斯湖也很近听说首先我觉得当地本身的这个气候还有地理位置什么的都特别适合滑雪嗯未来的时候可以有更好的就是更长时间